All right, Shalom. I want to start off with giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Harwah Kakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone. Peace and salutations to you, brothers, to the four corners of the earth, preaching this word and also laboring in this word in truth, love, and sincerity. May blessings fall upon the houses of the one third. And um, as I was, uh, you know, on my tablet today, I, um, I haven't been on my um one of my Bible apps in a very long time, so it asked me to update a few things, and I had to re-download a few things. But, you know, while I was doing so, once everything, you know, successfully downloaded, um, something popped up on my screen where it said, uh, you know, when you're uh, clicking through, like, the versions, and um, do you want to read the entire Bible, the Old Testament or New Testament? But then I, as I was scrolling down, I seen, you know, a, uh, a title that Esau came up with where it says, um, major prophet and minor prophet. Okay. So this is what actually sparked this lesson through the spirit. Now I looked it up, um, major and minor prophets as it, as I did on, um, just like a regular Google search. It says the answer is there is no difference between a major and minor prophet. Right. And there isn't because they are all servants of Yahweh. Okay, they are all servants of the Lord. Okay, but even though it says that, then it still separates them, right? It says the major prophets in the Bible are, you know, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. Then as it goes into the minor prophets, you know, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, right? As they, you know, title them in this major and minor prophet category now i'll say this you know these are all servants of the lord okay they're not put in that they shouldn't even be put in a category as a, a, a someone that's a major prophet and a minor prophet all right just because someone has you know less you know they does their book they have a less of a, of a letter or less of a book doesn't make them a minor prophet, okay? And I'm going to show you just a quick example because I'm going to go into the book of Obadiah, Obadiah real fast and show you that even though Obadiah's letter, he has one, you know, book or one letter, right? That that whole thing is, is just straight fire. I mean, the, the whole, the, our holy scriptures is, is, is all fire in one, okay? You know, everything is relevant. Everything, you know, has its, has its, uh, purpose, you know, uh, the instruction, the prophecies, you know, the correction, the reproof, you know, everything <clears throat> as a whole, you know, uh, together is everything we need, you know, but at the same time, you know, Esau titles it to the point where it's like, you know what, just because their, their, their book is very big, you know, that will make them a major prophet. Hey, all the prophets of the Lord are, are, uh, major prophets, major prophets, so to speak. You know, if you want to title it that way, there is no such thing as, you know, them being minor because their book is small, you know, because even as, like I said, in the book of Ob Obadiah, it's a small letter or a small book, but it's heavy. Okay. Heavy prophecy is in that, just that one letter just alone. Okay. So without further ado, I want to grab a few scriptures before I start there. I want to get, um, I believe it's second Timothy. Let's see. No, Salakia. Um, let's see, Salakia. <clears throat> um, let's see. Salakia, bear with me. I just thought of that scripture as I was, uh, thought of this scripture as I was, uh, speaking. Um, we just get it real fast. What's that? Second Timothy three. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So Second Timothy three. It's the book of Second Timothy three, verse. I'll start at. 14 it says 
But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise into salvation, through faith which is in Mashiach Yahushai. All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. So all scripture is given by the inspiration of the Most High. Okay. That the man of the Most High may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. So how you are, you know, uh, becoming uh, uh, furnished, right? It's going into the Word. Okay. That's why it says that the man of the Most High may be perfect, Truly furnished into all good works. Why? By reading and taking heed and applying the Holy Scriptures. Okay. Um, there's another one that says, uh, Slakia. Yeah. I think I'm just going, my mind is going blank. Um, Salakia, because I should know these scriptures um, <clears throat> by heart. Okay, Second Peter. Yeah, so I gotta you gotta get stay 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 dabbed dabbed in these scriptures, man. You know, you start to forget certain scriptures, basic scriptures. You know, Second Peter one verse um twenty. It says what? Knowing this first that the, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but what? But holy men of the Most High spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So these men, these servants of the Lord, these prophets, which they were Israelites, they were what? They were moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay? To write the things down that the Lord told them to write. Or, or and, 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 you know, uh, you know, speak the visions, you know, as he told them. You know, or as he had given them a vision and they had to jot different things down and to go back to tell uh, the people, you know, their people, okay, Israelites. Okay, and, uh, and other things with that as well. Okay, so uh, before I continue on, I want to also say this as well. You know, um, Salaki, uh, you know, every, you know, Different men of the Lord, different prophets were given their own, you know, measure and their own, you know, uh, uh, you know, things that that the Lord had bestowed upon them to uh, write down for the different prophecies and, you know, uh, things like that of what he wanted them to say, you know, in all their uh, in their own particular uh, manner, so to speak. You know, it wasn't that. You know, someone was, you know what, you're a minor prophet because I only want you to write two two books or two letters or whatnot. You know, makes them some less, um, not credible, but less, uh, 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 makes them less of a prophet. It wouldn't make them less of a prophet, okay? That's just what the Lord, the measure and the purpose, you know, that the Lord gave to them for their work to do, you know? Like I said before, all the servants of the Lord, you know, have have a heavy portion. Salakia. You know, they all have their own particular heavy portion that the Lord has given them to do their uh, certain uh, work. Okay. And Lord willing, hope this is uh, uh, making um, sense. All right. So I want to go into uh, the book of Psalm 68 verse 11. It says, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it, okay? And as we already know, the scripture says, uh, publish and conceal not, you know? So when you go into this word published, it says, um, to uh, in the Hebrew, it's uh, a basar. It says to bear news, right? To bear tidings, publish, preach, show forth, right? To gladden with the good news, to bear news, to announce, to announce and that's what we're doing you know we are also because as, as the scripture says uh um the spirit of the prophets is subject 
to the prophets, okay? So if you were a prophet back then, you would be a prophet now, okay? And what are you doing? You are, you know, prop preaching and prophesying. You are announcing the things of what's to come, right? And you're bearing the news that what you have gotten from the Lord, you know? And you're publishing and you're preaching, right? So it says to announce salvation. And we are doing that as well. We are announcing salvation. We are letting our people know that salvation is for the Israelites only. Okay? But we know as, uh, salvation is only going to... Uh, uh, the only one that's going to get salvation and to escape the destruction of America, Babylon, and Great, right? Is, is the only the one-third. Only the elect of the children of Israel because two-thirds of people have to be destroyed along with the heathen because they have... They still have a heathenistic mindset. They still have a, you know, they're Gentiles, if you will. They are still living a, living a corrupt and destructive life contrary to the ways of the Heavenly Father. Right? So it says to announce salvation as good news, preach to receive good news. So that's the point, you know. Uh, of publish. Okay, so let's uh, continue on. Let's go to Jeremiah 50. Verse 2, it says, I'll start at 1, it says, The word that the Lord spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet, declare ye among the nations and publish, right? See? And we are declaring, you know, these things, the things of the scriptures, all in truth of the scriptures, what well, among the nations, on the highways and byways, right? And publish and set up a standard, publish and conceal not so you're not supposed to conceal the word of Yahweh. You are to publish this word. Okay. Say Babylon is taken, Baal is confounded, Murdoch is broken in pieces. Right? I believe Baal is an idol, right? Yep, see, it was a, it was a chief Babylonian deity. You see? Baal the Baal, the Baal of the Babylonians. And we know America Babylon the Great is what? The daughter of Babylon as well. You know, so you know, uh, the chief de the chief deity here in America, Babylon, and Great is what? And what is also pushed throughout the world is who? Cesare Borgia. See, the white Jesus. The, the guy that you see over that plays all the, the movies uh, portraying to be the Lord that's in all these Hall of House churches, you know? He is the chief deity of uh, the daughter of Babylon, Okay. So it says Babylon is taken, Baal is confounded, right? Same thing as is is Cesare Borgia. He is confounded the same way as Baal is confounded with old Babylon, right? Um, Murdoch is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. Okay, so all these different idols and you know, images that this <clears throat> America of Babylon the Great pushes out and have set up, they are all being confounded through the spirit of the Lord. You know, and all the idols that America, Babylon the Great has today are, these are all the different same deities that were from back then, but they're all under a new uh, 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 form of uh, a new name, you know, maybe a, a, a extra new um, a ritual behind it, you know, such as putting a form as a, you know, a holiday, you know, like when you go back to like, uh, Easter and things like that. That goes all back to, you know, uh, I believe it's the Babylonian deity, uh, Ashitara, you know, or or a, or she's maybe a Canaanite deity, one or the other. But you know, the, that's just an example of the different forms of, you know, they put a new twist to it, but they're still of of an old origin of a, a heathen heathenistic deity. Okay, so that's the point on that. Um, I want to get this here real fast and we can move on. Um, the book of Amos 3 verse 7, it says, Surely the, the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto the servants, the prophets. Okay, so the Lord, so the Lord has have given, you know, these men his secrets. Okay, and what they have published them, you know, as they were told. You know, they always told them, speak to the children of Israel, speak to my people. You know, tell them, thus saith the Lord. You know, so tell them, thus saith the Lord God, you know, of the different things that surely was going to come to pass. Okay, so it's the same things we are doing now, you know. 
Um, so real fast before I close out, I just want to give you uh, a quick example. Now, as you see, you know, Obadiah has just one book, one book. What is it? Uh, about 21 verses, right? But you have to understand uh, uh, this alone is, is very heavy, you know. So let's start off reading this as um, Obadiah 1 verse 1. It says, the vision of Obadiah thus said the Lord God concerning Edom. There you go. So you want to ask yourself, well, who is Esau Edom? Esau Edom is the so-called white people today, the Edomites today of the Bible. Okay, so we had heard a rumor from the Lord and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Okay, and Edom, the Edomites are, are greatly despised amongst the nations of the world. Okay, you know, even, you know, you have different nations that do voice their opinion and tell you how much they hate America, Babylon, the Great, because um, America is, you know, their chief city. America is like um, uh, their Basra back then, which was a chief city in Edom, Edom, right? And the Lord have made, you know, Edom, this nation, small among the heathen. It says, the pride of thine heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? And, you know, what's up? I said, what's up? Oh, it's lucky, man. I always tell when you're trying to do a lesson, man. So, you know, we know the heart of the Edomites have this proud spirit. And they have this who shall bring me down to the ground spirit. Because they think that, you know, um, because the Lord have given them the strength to take over everything. And, and, and you know, the military might, you know, for his own purpose. Right? To, so they can ultimately have in their mind that, you know, they can't be taken down, you know, and that's and, and the people think the same way today. Because when you think of America, they say, you know, we got the strongest military and, you know, da da da, and no one can take us down. But see that your heart have deceived you because you've been in this ruling state so long that now you think that no one can take you down. OK, so what it says, the pride of thy heart have deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the cleft of the rock whose habitation is high. Say up in his heart, who should bring me down to the ground? And we know, you know, uh, the Edomites love being in this, you know, uh, uh, high habitation, you know, and I always like to be, you know, uh, surrounded by uh, uh, rocks. You know, that's why when you look at uh, Mount Seir, you know, in the different places and the structures that they have set up all, all are, you know, mountain-like, you know, Flintstone, you know, type places. Okay. It says, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and that, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence I will bring thee down, saith the Lord, right? And this would have Esau have done. You know, they have exalted themselves, you know, as the as the eagle, right? They have set their nest among the stars. Let me see. Does it go into it? Um, when you go into also to the word into the word nest. Um, it says sometimes, including the nestlings, figuratively a chamber or dwelling a nest. You know, Esau has put a nest. Oh, it's like I forgot what it means. Let's um, let's go to the online etymology. That nest also equates with um, uh, I believe like something like a gun nest, something like that. Because Esau, that's what Esau have put um, uh, in a in a uh, in a amongst the stars. You know, ultimately for the coming of the day of our Lord, t t so they can uh, uh, fight against him. You know, uh, military nest. Let's see, military nest. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, I can't find it at this time, you know. I'm going to see if I got any scriptures. Uh, over there, I slack it. Just bear with me more quick, you know. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'll have to... 
I could pull up on another lesson dealing with the nest, you know. <clears throat> so they had a, a, like a nest, you know, a place where they got all their, uh, you know, weapons on, you know. So it said, they, uh, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, since will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Um, if these came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they have not stolen till they had enough? If the great gatherers came to thee, would they would they not leave some grapes? How how are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? You know, and Esau, I mean, the Lord is making Esau bear. He is, um, you know, uh, uh, as the scripture says, thy skirt has been lifted up, roughly paraphrasing, you know. Esau is exposing, you know, these devils, you know, not only by his men, the servants are prophets, but he's also making Esau's tongue fall upon himself because he had other Edomites exposing Edomites, you know, and I, and that's a form, just a, a light form of the Egyptians versus the Egyptians, which that really means that, you know, the, uh, the Edomites are going to be going at each other, you know, um, um, uh, just a, a quick example, like the, the Americans going against the Russians. Why? Because they're both Edomites. You know, they're both Edomites that just took on forms of different names, you know. Verse uh, um, verse seven says, all the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at, were at peace with thee have deceived thee, right? The, the different um, American allies that was uh, once, you know, with them and, and down with them to the bone. And, and, it, and, it, and it really, you know, one of the main things that they were down with them was, with them was because of the fear, you know, uh, of, you know, if they um, wanted to rebel and go do their own thing, that Esau would just drop a bomb on them, you know? It says, and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is no understanding in him. Shall not in, in that day, said the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and the understanding out of the mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount, Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. You see? And we always tell you about your Edomites that y'all are going to be cut off, man. What? Y'all going to be cut off by what? Slaughter. Right? For the violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. So that's heavy in itself, you know, for all the things that Esau, Edom have done to the children of Israel, right? Because Jacob and Esau were twin brothers, right? But Jacob being a father of the Israelites, which are your so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and any, and any of you to come from uh, 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 that sea line, okay? That sea line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are an, you are, you are an Israelite, Okay, because the seed is kind of for the promise. But for you Edomites, right? You come want to come from Esau, Edom, you are going to be eventually cut off after you serve your time, your uh uh your uh your time of slavery in the kingdom, right? It says, In that day thou stoodest on the other side, and the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered in, into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem. Even thou was as one of them. Remember when you read in um, what is it? Uh, Psalm one thirty seven. It says uh, when they say raise it, raise it, you know, basically Esau was chatting down the destruction of us being uh, took down by uh, by the Babylonians, right? But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother and the day of, that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Mm -hmm. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in a day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered in, into the gate of my people in a day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction and laid in the day of their calamity, Slakia, nor have laid hands on their substance in a day of their calamity. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Right? Let's look at the word crossway. Now, parting of ways, breaking and up. And upon plunder, a crossroad, you know, uh, also a fork or a road, you know. So I guess, you know, as it's saying, Jake's trying to escape. Esau was just there to meet him, you know, to cut him off. Neither should this thou have delivered up those of his, of his that did remain in the day of distress. 
For the day of the Lord is near upon all heathen. You see? And that's what you people, we, we, we mentioned this to you people that, look, man, hey, for the, the Lord has a controversy uh, with the nations for Zion, for his people. You nations are going to go in chains, man. Fetters and iron, chains and shackles. This was the coming upon you, heathen, man. You know? But not only that, destruction, man. Destruction has come upon you, heathen. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. So everything that you have done to the Lord's people, his chosen people, which are the Israelites, right? Everything is going to be done back to you. I mean, when you read the book of Obadiah, that's what I'm saying. It's heavy. Okay, it's very heavy. It talks about the destruction of uh, Edom, you know, for what they have done to the Lord's people. It talks about how the Lord is going to visit the heathen. You know, for what they have done, you know, for their uh, partaking and destroying his chosen people. You see, so how can you put Obadiah in this minor prophet category? You know, when we're reading how heavy, right, how heavy, heavy this letter is, you know, and how beautiful it is at the same time. Because when you hear this, you know, as an Israelite, you should rejoice because you are seeing the, the, the uh, or a. Uh, uh, Reading the destruction of, you know, the heathen, you know, and, and, and mainly in particular the chief of them all was Esau Edom, you know. But, hey, you could look at all the uh, the prophets. They all spoke about the destruction of the heathen, you know. And But just this book in particular, Obadiah, speaks heavy upon the judgment of Esau, you know. So it says, for the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen as thou hast done, and it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. For as ye have, Salakia, for as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they that have, and they shall be as though they have not been. You see? And what we know that y'all about to drink the heavy cup of indignation of the Lord. You're about to drink a heavy cup of slavery. Okay? You're about to drink the things that we had to go through, which y'all about to go through, starting with Esau, Edom. That's why the scripture says um, in Lamentations, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. You see? But upon Mount Zion shall be, what? Deliverance. Zion represents who? Israel. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness in and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Why? Because we're going to own them. You see? In the kingdom of heaven, which will be on earth, we are going to own these heathen. Okay? And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. And who? In the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall be not any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. So right there alone is letting you know that Esau is eventually going to be cut off. They are going to be wiped off the earth. The house of Esau is going to the word house is in the Hebrew is bayaf. House, dwelling, habitation, shelter, abode of animals, um, a place, a house. House is containing a family, right? The family of the Edomites. Um... Those belonging to the same household, family of descendants, uh, descendants, descendants as an organized body. You know, so the house represents the descendants and the people of Esau, Edom. And they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain, the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim. And the fields of Samaria and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. Uh, Gilead. And the captivity of the host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even to Zerapahath, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sepharad, shall possess the cities of the south. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge, to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. 
You see? So the kingdom is going to be uh, Yahweh Shah. It's going to be the Heavenly Father. It's still his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, because everything is going to be given to his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. Okay, so I read the verse 21 again. It says, And Savior shall come up in Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau. To what? To judge the Mount of Esau. And the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Let's go into that word judge. It's Shapat in Hebrew. Judge. It says, To judge, govern, vindicate, punish. Punish. You Edomites will be punished for what you have done all throughout the earth. Right? It says, Act as a lawgiver or judge or govern or a governor to rule. To decide controversy of the Most High to men, or so like I said, to decide controversy, to execute judgment. Okay, um, let's see. That's the point. That's what it is, right? So it's to execute judgment, is to pronounce a sentence. Okay, and this was happening, going to happen upon the head of Esau, Edom, right? So, like I said before, you know, just going into this book of Obadiah is very heavy. Okay, very heavy. You know, and there's you know, more things I could have said and went into a little bit, but I think, believe, believe the point is made, you know. So, you know, the titles that Esau used as major and minor prophets, you know, just, you know, I, I would say, you know, for you, you new listeners out there, just ignore that. Okay, because that's just him trying to downplay, you know, the role of a prophet because, you know, he, he doesn't have... um his books may not be as much, but you know, like I said, everyone, every uh, servant of the Lord, every prophet has been given their own, you know, measure and their own purpose of what they were to, uh, you know, speak about or prophesy about or, or the vision that the Lord have given them to uh, publish and conceal not, conceal not, you know, and but we know everything as the scripture says for everything is written for our learning. Okay, for our learning, so we go back and we search the ways of our fathers, and we, you know, read, uh, read the books, and with the true understanding, the spirit of the Lord being bestowed upon, you know, uh, the men of the Lord out there, which um, are the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, you know, they have been given the spirit to uh, break these things down the correct way, and also, you know, give it back to us so we can break it down the right way, and go out there and teach His word in all true patience and sincerity so you know with that i just wanted to uh I'll touch on that real quick global i hope this lesson was edifying so until the next time i want to say shalom